Hey everyone, today I'm going to take you through the differences between long and short crank LS engines. Then I'm going to show you uh, what to do if you do have a long crank LS engine and you need an SFI flex plate. So the long crank engines were produced in 1999 and 2000 and they featured iron heads. Now the only difference between the two engines, the long and the short crank, besides the iron heads, is that the long crank engine has a 400 thou longer crank flange. So the great thing about these engines is they're often deemed unusable or too difficult to use and there's a ton of misinformation on the internet. So I'll show you in this video, you can pick up the flex plate I'm going to show you, install it on your engine, go ahead and use your 4L80 and save a boatload of money on the engine itself. I got my long block with a long crank for 150 bucks. So here's a side view of the crank. And as you can see, this is the difference. So the long crank engine, the rear flange protrudes about 400 thousandths of an inch further than the newer 2001 plus engines. Now the interesting thing here to remember is that this 400 thou longer makes this engine identical to a small block Chevy. Small block Chevy distance from the bell housing bolts to the crank flange is exactly the same as this long crank engine. So there's really nothing out of the ordinary about it. And in fact, for old school guys, this engine is actually a lot closer to what they're used to. It's more the short crank LS engine that's a little bit different. So you can also see between the long and short crank engines, the starter position does not change. So what this means is to make a long crank engine work, you just use a flat flex plate. To make a short crank engine work, use a dished flex plate. Now the interesting thing here about this flywheel, the ATI 915543, is you can actually use it in either a short or a long crank application. Now if you want to use this in a short crank application, ATI offers a kit, the 915733, which actually includes the spacer and the longer bolts, which means that this kit could be used uh, without the spacer in a long crank or with the spacer with a short crank application. So the huge advantage to this right out of the gates is that this one flex plate can be the last flex plate you ever have to buy. The great thing about this flex plate is it's SFI 29.1 rated, uh, which means that it's a much safer unit than a stock one. And if you have any sort of performance application or it's gonna see anything other than daily driver, mild use, you need this type of a flex plate. Flex plate failures can be absolutely catastrophic uh, and completely destroy uh, your engine, your transmission, uh, your legs, among other things. So here's a quick little side-by-side -side view of the stock flex plate uh, and the ATI SFI unit. Okay, now I'm gonna take you guys through the installation of the flex plate, which is a fairly basic procedure. Uh, it's extremely important to note that the engine side is labeled on a flex plate. So obviously this side goes uh, towards the front of the car, towards the engine. One other important thing to do here is to ensure that your flex plate bolts can be fully threaded into the crank and that there's no binding. So I've gone ahead and used aftermarket ARP bolts and they require a little bit of this ARP loop under the head of the bolt and then Loctite on the threads per ARP's instructions. So what I do is I get all the bolts prepped first uh, and then I go ahead and install the flex plate up to the engine, making sure that the flex plate is sitting flush against the back of the crank flange. Uh, you definitely want to make sure the crank flanges and bolt holes are all cleaned before you go ahead and, and install the flex plate here. Next, I'll just thread in all the bolts hand tight. Finally, I'll go around in a star pattern and tighten the bolts to ARP spec here, which is 85 pound feet. If you're using factory GM bolts, you're going to have to use their torque specs. So that's it. That's how easy it is to install this flex plate. I hope this helped you out and now you guys are all able to use these long crank engines and uh, hopefully save a boatload of money buying them. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below and I'll try my best to respond. Thanks for watching.